The coaptation splint is used to immobilize the humerus. Most frequently, the splint is used for fractures of the humeral diaphysis, such as the oblique mid-shaft humerus fracture depicted here. The coaptation splint may be used in isolation or combined with a posterior long arm splint. The application of a long arm splint is covered in a separate video. Position the patient in a sitting position on the bed with the arm held in neutral abduction and the elbow in 90 degrees of flexion. Use a piece of Webril to measure from the patient's axilla, down around the elbow, and then up the lateral aspect of the arm to the shoulder. Lay this piece of Webril on a bedside table and then roll out three additional layers to form the cast padding. Next, roll out 10 to 12 layers of 4 to 6 inch plaster on top of the Webril. The plaster may be folded back and forth upon itself during this process. Several rolls of plaster may be required for the coaptation splint. Soak the plaster in room temperature water until fully saturated. Raise the plaster from the bucket and remove the excess water by allowing the layers to gently fold down on themselves. Lay the plaster down onto the cast padding and smooth it with the palms of your hands. Place another layer of Webrill over the top of the plaster, which will prevent it from sticking to the elastic bandage. Apply the splint to the patient's arm, beginning in the axilla, wrapping it around the elbow, and then up the lateral aspect of the arm. In this example, a short coaptation splint was applied, which would be appropriate for distal humerus fractures. More proximal fractures would require a splint that extends above the shoulder joint. Once the splint has been applied, wrap a 4 or 6 inch elastic bandage around the splint proceeding in a distal to proximal direction. Use a moderate degree of tension while applying the elastic bandage. Recheck the distal neurovascular function once you have finished. A sling may be applied for additional support of the shoulder and for patient comfort.